Hi, I'm Ken Howard, and welcome to the Gay Therapy LA podcast. Today, I'd like to talk about for a job, for a guy, for a change, gay men, and the decision to relocate. Over the course of my long 29 years in 2021 career as a gay men specialist, therapist, and life career relationship executive coach, I've had a certain list of topics that guys come to me about regularly, wanting some help. And one of these is someone who wants guidance because he's trying to make an important life decision, which is whether to relocate from where he currently lives and uproot to go someone else, go somewhere else to reinvent his life. So it makes sense that guys want help when they face this kind of decision, or even if they're just thinking about it. It's a bit scary, because they're right. Relocating your home to another city or state or country is daunting, because it's a decision that is not easily reversed. It takes a really strong commitment. And people can be concerned that they really want to look before they leap, and try to make the best decision possible for their long-term well-being, which involves some careful speculation about what that new life in a new place might look like. So I tend to work with guys often on what I call developmental issues, where you are in the phases of life, from being very young to being much older, and also existential issues, which involves who you are, where you are, and what you're doing, especially personally and professionally, to give your life a sense of meaning and purpose. Let's talk about what home means. One of my favorite inspirational New Age authors, the late Louise L. Hay, used to talk about how the home that we find ourselves living in has enormous impact on our mental and spiritual health. She noted that she liked homes where there was lots of natural light, where, which you know, she found inspiring, which can also have you know, positive effects on the brain and regulating your circadian rhythms and your moods from a physiological psychology point of view. There's actually you know, studies on um, what your surroundings, the temperature, and especially related to light and how that affects you. And on my website, on GayTherapyLA.com, I wrote an article on gay men and making your house a home. And you can look that up. If you go to GayTherapyLA.com slash blog and um, just search on the term like house a home, it'll talk about, you know, gay men and making their homes fabulous. But just like it's important to find the right dwelling, whether it's a single family house or an apartment or a condominium or a a loft or whatever you know for what we need and and what we can afford the town and city and state and country that you're in is also important where we live has implications from what that place is in terms of its history its culture its climate its politics its natural geography and its economy This is especially true for gay men because, let's face it, gay men and and other LGBT plus issues for sexual and gender minorities have a different time of it in progressive and welcoming versus conservative and rejecting types of locales and environments. You know, I, for one, am glad every day that I live in West Hollywood, California, which is part of the broader Los Angeles, California metropolitan area, that you know, West Hollywood has a majority LGBT city council, you know, in a firmly blue or progressive or democratic county, in a firmly blue state of California, whereas LGBT plus issues are politically validated and legislators generally vote in favor of LGBT affirmative laws, you know, except for that awful Proposition 8 in 2008, which California passed, you know, temporarily outlawing marriage equality. And that was in place until the U.S. Supreme Court ruling, you know, negated those discriminatory laws in every state. But even a progressive blue state like California did pass Proposition 8 with a lot of fear-mongering. 
so you know and and it only gets worse i think sometimes from from california so you know where you live especially for gay men has enormous implications politically and just what the the law the land is what the actual laws on the books say about what your protections are or maybe the lack thereof in addition to whatever the local uh, culture is so existentially we can always say you know home is where you hang your hat and <laughs> many gay men move around a lot especially to further their career just as many straight men do and straight women do and people of all genders and in los angeles many gay men come from other places to be a part of the hollywood entertainment industry rivaled perhaps only by new york city although there are some other cities that are starting to have important entertainment industry representation such as atlanta I think there's a Marvel Studios there, Pinewood Studios, Atlanta, Tyler Perry Studios. So Atlanta has a, a growing entertainment capital, but still maybe less so than, than Los Angeles or New York. You know, guys who are Wall Street go-getters might flock to New York. Other guys might be drawn to the academia that proliferates in the Northeast United States, Harvard and Yale and all this. The clients I work with from other countries might be part of the very gay-friendly aspects of London, Paris, Berlin, Sydney, Bangkok. I know I have listeners to this podcast, you know, in in cities all over the world, and so I try to address uh, folks outside, gay men, you know, outside of just the United States, because a lot of these issues that I'm talking about on this show apply to gay men, you know, the world world over, really. And there's definitely a sort of unwritten, although, you know, some travel sites do tend to write these down, set of rules about how relatively LGBT plus friendly a place is. You know, Tel Aviv, for example, will score much higher than, say, Tehran. <laughs> you know, I have some pen pals in Tehran, and they tell me about it being a very oppressive place in Iran for gay men and all LGBT people. So for many the home part can be dictated by the industry that we want to stake our fortune in. Or it could be where our family of origin is, our parents, our siblings, aunts and uncles, and we want to be near them. One of the most important variables I see in my work as a therapist and coach, and it was true for me too, was that there can be conflict between living in a place where your family of origin is versus where the work is. And unfortunately, this is a relocation dilemma that is not easily resolved. I went where the work is, but now at my middle age, early seniorhood, I realized that I missed out on a lot of events in the life of my family of origin, especially watching my nieces grow up, that I kind of regret, um, especially if your work doesn't provide for frequent leisure travel or time off to visit your loved ones. It's important to make your location or your relocation decisions in the context of not only what serves you now, but the implications for potentially many years into the future when your parents or your nieces and nephews or your siblings grow to be older year after year after year. And, you know, a lot of stuff happens while you're away from your family. Another variable that can be challenging is that a locale might be great for advancing your career, but not as great for the local LGBT atmosphere. I hear this a lot from clients, you know, especially in rural areas or in the American South, you know, to varying degrees. Some place like Dallas, Texas is going to be more progressive and have more of a gay life than, than other cities in the South, um, you know, or in various countries of the world. You know, the Arab and African countries, especially having the most severely negative laws and practices for LGBT people, you know, up to and including capital punishment of their LGBT citizens just for existing. You know, these, these climates get very extreme from very progressive to um, outright dangerous, murderous. Or another conflict can be feeling pressure to relocate to an area that you don't really enjoy but it's a place where you can either get ahead more readily in your career 
or it's where your particular company or industry is situated. You know, although working remotely, you know, fueled by the entire global COVID pandemic has made this idea of working from anywhere more of a realistic option worldwide. You just have to be mindful of time zones. When I work with guys in other countries, you know, we always have to think about where you are in what global time zone versus what time it is in Los Angeles during my office hours. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the wanderlust instinct. So, you know, despite these occasional conflicts that, that sometimes need talking out and weighing the pros and cons with guided critical thinking, such as from a therapist or coach, American gay men actually come from a certain built-in genetic predisposition for wanderlust. You know, I don't have the exact citation, you know, this is a fairly informal podcast show. It's not an academic journal. Ordinarily, I should really cite my sources, but it was this great article that once talked about, you know, since so many people in the United States came from other places in the world, they're immigrants historically, we kind of have wanderlust in our DNA. I also think that gay men's capacity for trying new things and having a certain neuroplasticity for adaptive coping and new ways of looking at things, you know, which can come out of the critical thinking process that's required, you know, to come out as gay men in the first place, also gives us, in general, a certain sense of adventure and kind of a, oh, what the hell, let's try it, disposition. And that can include, you know, moving around and doing new things. So gay men for decades, historically, you know, especially after World War I and certainly after World War II, have grown restless in small towns. And they flocked to the bigger cities where they can blend in a bit more and experience more diversity of population, uh, more tolerance overall socially, particularly and historically in places uh, like New York City or San Francisco or Los Angeles. And they can find each other more readily for social and romantic and sexual support. You know, even in the 2020 presidential election in the U.S., we saw how urban areas such as Atlanta were decidedly voting progressive for Joe Biden, while more rural areas of all parts of the United States tended to vote red or conservative for Donald Trump, but with still lots of purple areas, you know, such as certain counties, especially in states like Florida or Virginia or Pennsylvania that are kind of known as swing states politically. So let's look at some of the reasons for relocation. You know, the reasons why gay men are forced with a do I or don't I decision regarding relocation can be several. So number one is a job. You know, of all the gay male clients I've worked with over my 29 years doing this, most have discussed relocating in relation to their jobs. You know, I work mostly with gay male executives or guys that kind of have these high demand, high reward jobs that usually require relocating or even frequent work travel at different points in their career. I hear of the cultural differences that guys observe in places where they have lived. You know, a frequent topic is that guys report that it's harder to make friends and to date in Los Angeles than it is in other American cities that they've lived in. There's something about the local Los Angeles culture, whether it's spread out or everybody in traffic all the time or whatever, that makes it hard to socialize relative to other cities, particularly places like New York, where people tend to live in a more concentrated area. So guys see relocating for a job as a trade-off to further their economic progress and, and their title and salary history over time, and see it as just part of the deal, you know, that they have to accept. In many cases, guys don't regret making those relocation decisions because they experience for themselves and observe it in their peers that it is, indeed, it's, it's a good way to move up the ladder. It's just kind of a corporate cultural thing that if you're willing to move and be flexible uh, for your job, they'll tend to reward you with an increase in job title and 
level of responsibility and, of course, the salary and, and perks that go with that. We could also be where an industry is located. You know, if somebody wants to really be a part of entertainment, they're really looking at the places where a lot of entertainment industry activity happens or whatever the local uh, region tends to support. You know, the automotive industry in Detroit, Michigan, for example. You know, these classic historical places where certain industries tend to coalesce. Let's look at moving for a partner, then that's kind of a different kind of topic, because moving to another city because your boyfriend or partner or spouse lives there is the second most common reason for relocation that I hear about from my clients. And while I support many guys in long distance relationships, and I have a, a previous podcast episode on, on tips for making a long distance relationship work, there's also a blog article on that, just, just search for my name, Ken Howard, and long distance relationships, and you'll find it. So a lot of tips on that. Um, but eventually most relationships want that domestic component of actually sharing a home together in the same city. And this is perhaps the riskiest option because if the relationship should end, the guy has already probably left a job and a home in another city, and that would not be easy to recreate if he wanted to reverse his decision to leave. Often I work with guys who move to the Los Angeles area to be with a relatively new partner, broken up, and then stayed in L.A. as a single guy again, when they might not have moved here if it weren't for the original relationship. There's kind of a triumvirate, so to speak, of the city you're in, the partner you have, and the job that you have that needs to be okay with you and okay with your partner. You know, basically there are six variables in that equation. The city, your partner, and the job for you, and the city and the partner and the job for him. And those things all have to generally be okay in order for your life together to work out. If you love your partner and your job, but you hate the city that you're living in, that's going to be a problem that needs attention. Or mix up any of those variables for you or for him. And that's something that you'd need to work through. And maybe with a therapist or coach, um, that would be a relationship issue that needs its own support. Or it might be part of the support that you need to kind of make sense of, um, you know, which, which is the stronger feeling, hating the city you're in or loving the partner that you have. You know, what kind of sacrifices are okay and acceptable for you? And what kind of sacrifices make you too unhappy to tolerate? And that can be, you know, a course of the work that I do with someone. Another reason to relocate might be just having a fresh start. You know, relocating because you want a fresh start in life is a little less common, but it certainly fuels a certain number of gay men's relocations annually. I work with clients often on what therapists call behavioral rituals that give a sense of ceremony or a sense of occasion which can support cognitive reframing and behavioral change. There are many rituals that symbolize emotional concepts such as you know exchanging wedding rings or religious or spiritual observances like a Jewish guy wearing a yarmulke or um, you know lots of things that symbolize an emotional or cultural value for us. So picking a spot on the map and moving there can be a way to give our brains and our spirits novel stimulation and make us more you know, citizens of the world to expand the vibrancy of our life experience, you know, beyond just visiting new places on a vacation, let's say, that you actually want to live there. Relocating for a fresh start can be a behavioral ritual that represents out with the old, in with the new, and it can affirm our idea that if things go wrong, you know, we can always begin again somewhere else. That's kind of a nomadic lifestyle, but for some people, that really works for them. And it can um, be a lifestyle where you're really feeling like you're enjoying your life because you're literally seeing more of the world. And that can be exciting. Another reason for a relocation would be some kind of a life change. You know, I've worked with many guys who relocate after a life change, and this can be after leaving college or grad school, very, 
very common to, to leave college or grad school and then relocate to a different city or state, especially for a job. It can be after a breakup, certainly after a relationship breakup, somebody might move away. Um, after the death of a partner or a loved one, like if you've had caretaking responsibility for an elderly parent and they pass away, you might move. Or if you've been widowed, you might move away. You know, Maybe you have a life change like midlife and you reinvent your life at, at 40 or around there. Um, certainly at retirement, someone might relocate to a city that's more conducive to retirees or maybe with a lower cost of living to accommodate a retirement income. So people tend to enter therapy at times of life change and transition because it is the simple stress of change itself for better or for worse. You know, one of the definitions of stress is just change. Could be for the worse, but it also could be for the better. And that prompts people to seek help. You know, changing lanes in life, you know, can be a prompt to reach out for help. So these kinds of life changes offer a natural pause in life that create a window to relocate. You know, in my work with gay men, I often use cultural references that have a certain gay sensibility to them, you know, including classic movies or TV shows that are likely to be familiar to gay men. You know, the 80s and, and early 90s classic TV show, The Golden Girls, often a favorite of gay men, um, featured a flashback episode where Betty White's character of the naive Rose Nyland is back in her old home of St. Olaf and holding herself a birthday party, for one, <laughs> after the death of her husband, Charlie. And in a very moving and poignant monologue, uh, Rose speaks to Charlie's empty chair at the kitchen table and talks about wanting a change in her life after his passing away. And she mentions she's heard good things about Miami and makes a wish on her birthday cake. And of course, the audience knows what happens next. You know, she moves to Miami and she meets Dorothy and Blanche and Sophia. And we have the show that we all know and love today. But the writers, you know, in that series depicting her emotional process to relocate based on the life change of her being widowed, you know, via Betty White's monologue was a beautiful dramatization of a person's emotional and thought process to relocate because life circumstances opened a window for it. It's moving because so many people can relate to that process. And it also, I think, is a poignant depiction of how someone deals with grief, where there's such love and loss that she had for her late husband, but at the same time, she mentions how she's given it a lot of thought over the course of eight months since his passing and decides that it's time for her to make a change and then she forms you know the relationship with her new friends and it's fiction but yet you know there are so many real life people who've been through a similar process that want to make a relocation after a life change so let's look at both good and bad reasons to relocate. Now that sounds a little judgy, but you know, stay with me on this. So moving due to a job or a partner or a fresh start or a life change can all be good reasons to make the leap. You know, those kinds of moves can represent personal growth, job opportunity, cultural enrichment, economic, upward mobility, and social involvement. And I think for gay men, sometimes they relocate because they want very specific gay male peel, peer social support. But sometimes what we have to troubleshoot is that sometimes a, a gay man might move from a rural area to a big city, and then the big city's full of attitude queens, and no one wants to be his friend, and no one wants to date him. That frustration is very real, particularly for older men or men who are not traditionally attractive. I see this sometimes on Facebook discussions about older gay men feeling like they're lonely in a big city full of gay men. And that's a separate issue that I work with guys on. But very often moving to a city where there is more LGBT representation in general and, and gay male representation in particular forms a sense of peer support. You feel like you're living among your own people and that can be very validating. So these are all sound reasons that make the decision to move, you know, prone to succeed. 
However, there can be bad reasons, so to speak, to consider relocating. And these can involve using relocation as a strategy when other strategies for managing or improving your life are called for instead. A relocation move that is not thought out, you know, at least reasonably, that can be an impulsive mistake. Moving without a plan in place, such as a job or a you know, reliable promise of one, or having your housing arranged can be especially risky. Moving when what you really need is emotional support to work through a problem or a set of problems can be a mistake. You know, I'm not in Alcoholics Anonymous AA, but I always say I like to steal their sayings. They have some clever sayings. And one of their terms is pulling a geographic, you know, which means someone, you know, likely with a drug or alcohol problem, simply moving away to a different city instead of really coming to terms with their challenges through the AA program or its alternatives like smart recovery or one of those or therapy or other kinds of social support. You know, too often relocation, just the the instinct to flee, can be the wrong tool for the job. And this is something that therapy or coaching around this topic can help with. You know, what problem are you trying to solve with relocating and could that problem be solved with another behavioral strategy besides just, oh, moving away, you know, just dropping it and leaving it all behind. It's generally thought that major life decisions that are well thought out, especially by revisiting them over time, not forever, but over time, and not just some kind of temporary whim or mood or quick reaction to a short-term stressor, you know, that makes for better decisions if it's more thought out and maybe if it's processed with a therapist or coach in conversation. And, you know, it being more well thought out creates less potential for expensive and time-consuming regrets, not to mention the emotional heartache. Of all the guys I've helped with with the relocation dilemma, all of them who have somehow kept in touch or we've continued work remotely after their relocation They've looked back and viewed their relocation as the right decision, you know, probably fueled by a drive for continuous self-improvement, which is a trait that many of my clients have in common. You know, guys who are interested in continuous self-improvement through the lifespan are often consumers of therapy or coaching. They might also be consumers of um, personal trainers at the gym or other types of mentoring, whatever their interest is and, and whatever they can you know, afford to do in terms of getting help and, and making that investment because it's a part of continuous self-improvement throughout the lifespan. Let's look at relocation from the standpoint of existential issues. So um, in a blog article on GayTherapyLA.com years ago, I discussed the famous Immanuel Kant quote that said, in this life, we need something to do, someone to love, and something to hope for. So relocating can be part of those things to do or people to love. What we hope for in the new location is that we will become more self-actualized in life. You know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs will go up the pyramid. And what we will achieve is something important for us in our own value system that we couldn't have gotten had we not relocated to get it. John Bowles, B-O-L-L-E-S, in his classic book about job hunting called What Color Is Your Parachute, which is very cleverly updated with a new edition every year or every couple years. And isn't that clever because he can sell new editions of the same book. But he discusses that your career search involves the skills you want to use in the setting you want to use them in and for the benefit of a worthy audience of customers or clients or or people who are the the recipient of your labor efforts and i'd like to add to that so it's where the audience is you know for example i'm a therapist and coach which are you know related but somewhat different services um these are the skills you know, that I have and that I use, and as a sex therapist as well. You know, at first in Los Angeles in person, and now worldwide, you know, just by a webcam, which is the setting, and specifically for gay men, 
the worthy audience that I want to direct my labors to, that motivate me. I, I want to support you guys, gay men as a group. And any one of those variables could be changed. You know, such as my therapist colleagues in Los Angeles, but their audience is teenage girls with eating disorders. You know, it's the same skills in the same setting, but for a different target audience. So for your career, your skill set to be a, could be applied to various work settings. You know, I work in a private practice, for example, while some therapists might work in a rehab center or a hospital or a community-based mental health clinic. And for your chosen audience of people, but the setting could not only be an organization or institutional or corporate setting, but also the town and city and state and country that you reside in. Think about the implications for your career, especially regarding career satisfaction for you in your own value system based on where you were located doing it. You know, some people might want to be a teacher, but instead of being a teacher in the inner city, schools of the United States, maybe they want to be a teacher in a foreign country, you know, and, and bring those teaching resources to a very underserved country of the world, um, almost like a, uh, like a Peace Corps mission kind of thing. In social work, you know, I'm, I'm trained as a clinical and psychiatric social worker, not as a psychologist. We use something called the person and environment theory. And this means that there is everything that makes you you, but if we change the environment that you're in, you would change to some degree too, because there's always this give and take between you and the environment, and you would adapt to your local surroundings. Your environment can support you and give you resources and energy and sustenance, or your environment can harm you and give you stress. It's important to choose carefully where you put yourself, and it's important to make a change if that environment is detrimental to your well-being. Let's talk about relocation as anxiety management. You know, when guys work with me to process their feelings about the decision to relocate, what they're really doing is managing the anxiety that making a large life decision can bring. If we define anxiety as the fear of loss, you know, that loss could be loss of life and limb, like being anxious that a snake you see in, in the road in front of you will bite you, or a loss of some kind of emotional standing, like an audience you're giving a speech to will boo you off the stage. Some anxieties and fears are valid. You know, it's important to avoid, you know, venomous snake bites, you know, and it's important to prepare reasonably for giving a speech. But sometimes the role of therapy or coaching is about really examining your anxieties to form a more realistic view of your life, you know, to guard against the, the distortions in thinking called cognitive distortions that might skew our perception about how things are. And we need to kind of, you know, get our thinking straight and not be indulging in distortions that confuse us or arouse an unreasonable anxiety. So the stress of deciding to relocate is kind of like this. If you give up things like your current home and job and set of friends and proximity to family and cultural environment and all the things you're familiar with, it can either mean that you're trading those for an opportunity to form new and better things in life or experiencing a loss that you're going to regret. And the stakes can feel high. But another AA saying is living life on life's terms. You know, this means that you can't expect to go through life without some kind of acceptance of reasonable risk. It's like those game shows where you give up a lesser prize for the chance to win a bigger prize, or you might lose the first prize. So how do you decide? And the key word there is reasonable. It's not reasonable to ask yourself to have a life that is completely without risk. You know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. But if you feel in your gut that leaving a place for another place is not a good idea and that you'd be relieved if you did not have to go, then that's an important instinct to follow as well. I admit, I've sometimes ignored that instinct, you know, not to do something, and I've regretted it with sadness. But I also had a, 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 an experience about 20 years ago where I was going to relocate for a relationship and it didn't feel right and I didn't do it and I was glad I didn't because the relationship ended soon after that 
And I really learned then, and I encourage others to really follow your gut. If something doesn't feel right about you selling everything or whatever and making a move, then don't do it. But if you wake up every day of considering that decision and it's exciting and you feel a calling and you feel like you're being drawn to where you need to be and what you want to become, then that's a good sign that you have a good feeling. Back on the Golden Girls, Rose has a line, I have a really good feeling about that. And maybe she was somehow predicting, you know, that she would meet the other girls. And, you know, after all, if you get out of your comfort zone often enough, if you experiment with that, then you build a bigger comfort zone. You know, you can tolerate a little bit of anxiety because that can be an excitement and that pushes you for growth. Because in life, we move in one direction, and that's forward. So, if you would like help or support about relocating or any other life decision or, or challenge that you're having, please consider therapy if you're in California where I'm licensed or coaching services which is you know anywhere else in the United States of the world I would be happy to help you can email me at ken at gaytherapyla.com ken k-e-n or you know call or text me in the United States is th area code 310-339-5778 so 310-339-5778 just a heads up with news, I'm going to be developing the Gay Coaching LA uh, smartphone app. That's something that's in the works, so I can keep you posted on that. If you're interested in, in having the, the Gay Coaching LA app, um, I'd love to hear what you'd like to see me include in that in content in different areas of life, like sex, relationships, finances, mental health, physical health, sexuality, all kinds of stuff. Um, so that's going to be coming up soon and uh, please remember to give a review to this podcast if you're enjoying it. I'm a little light on reviews. I'd like to have a little more reviews and so we can kind of spread the word and get more people listening because I think they might enjoy that if we, if we had other listeners too. And if you have suggestions for future episode topics, I'm always you know glad to receive those suggestions and you know I'll try and develop some episodes based on topics that you guys want to hear from all over the world. So thanks, and I'll see you next time.